welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new here, hello. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs, wood signs, and there's always tons of laughter to be had. So if you think you'd enjoy that, then make sure to stick around and watch the DIYs. And with that said, let's go ahead and get right into them. All right, my unicorns. Um, this is the stash that eventually we need to get through, okay? So if you watch my vlogs, I'll link the channel down below. I gave you a full tour of my craft room. So if you wanna see that, then I will link that down below. But these are like my thrift store finds or the things I was previously selling on my website, which I no longer um, am utilizing, but we need to get through this stuff. And I do have a booth um, that will also be on a vlog as well. So I need to get through this stash. So hopefully you guys are into that. Um, we <laughs> have a lot. I think what I'm gonna start with is, are these right here. We're gonna use some IOD products today and we're gonna see what we can create. So let's go ahead and get started. First project is going to be these beautiful pieces that when Goodwill was actually, or sorry, Salvation Army was inexpensive. These both were $1.99 each and they are so heavy. So I didn't wanna put these in the sink because I don't know why I felt maybe they would rust. I, I don't know. So I just took a baby wipe and I'm gonna clean the whole thing and these things definitely needed to be cleaned. Then I'm gonna grab my shellac. If you guys are uh, someone that, that likes to repurpose things, definitely grab the spray shellac. This is gonna block any of the stains that come through with like oils and wood and all that stuff. So after I spray it, I just wanted to show you, it does come out glossy, but it sprays, it dries super fast. So now I'm taking a new color, Coastal Blue by rust -Oleum. I've been getting mine either on Amazon when I can't find it or uh, Walmart. Walmart has actually had better prices than uh, Menards lately on the chalk paint. So that's where I've been getting mine. I'm gonna use a chippy brush and I am going to do two coats of this. So I like to use the chippy brush as I've mentioned in previous videos because I like that the bristles get in all of the little like details. Um, I just find that it, it works a lot easier and I also like, I'm drawing a blank, you guys, pregnancy brain, <laughs> moving on. Okay, so I'll do one coat of this. Then I will go back after I dry it and then I'm gonna do a stippling effect. So I like doing this on my chalk paint because I find that it gives it just a little texture it also makes it look like we've done like the baking soda and chalk paint mixture, uh, like a kind of like a faux cement look. And by stippling, if you don't know what that means, is I'm just pouncing my paintbrush up and down on the surface. And again, we're using the chip brush for this. You could also use chalk paint brushes. You do you. So after that dries, I just wanted to show you, I do do this one, but it's the same thing, so I didn't wanna repeat. But if you guys get any chalk paint where you don't want it, I didn't wanna paint on the inside or underneath this, so I just grabbed a baby wipe and I am going to wipe it down. And even if it's dry, it will come off because it is water based. So I just wanted to share this tip with you because I thought, you know, a lot of people probably get a little bit messy and chalk paint is definitely something that you can clean up with like a uh, paper towel and water. Um, we got the tornado sirens going off. They, it's a drill, don't worry. All right, so after I wipe all of that off, I am going to, I took these outside, sprayed them with clear matte by rust -Oleum. And the reason I did that is because when using IOD transfers, they do recommend that you put a clear coat on first. And these birds, you guys are gorgeous. I get my transfers from Vonda over at thepaintedheirloom.com. I will attach her link down below. And I am taking my Cricut scraper here and we are just going to rub down on this transfer. Now, I like to pick my clear film up as I go. Um, that way I know if my image is adhering and if it's not, I just put it back down, rub a little bit more and you're going to repeat that process 
until you go all the way to the other side. But these transfers, you guys, it's crazy how you can transform something with <laughs> these beautiful images. And they have so many. All right, I'll, I'm gonna stop this real quick. You guys, the sirens have stopped. Okay, so now I'm gonna burnish this. So I'm just taking a little bit of that clear paper that came on the top of it, and I'm just rubbing this over our image. You can also do this with um, like a microfiber towel as well. And it just helps, you know, make sure that it's, it's in there properly and um, that the like clear film around it doesn't show. So now I'm taking my DIY white wax, again, with a chip brush, and I'm gonna rub that all over this tray. And I also do the same thing to the other like bucket that I was doing. And I love how this changes the whole look of the tray. And I do want to mention that DIY wax and Waverly wax, Waverly wax is more of like a runny consistency where you have to go back and pat dry it with a paper towel. DIY wax has more of like a buttery consistency where you don't have to go back and wipe it down. So that's why I tend to grab this instead of my Waverly wax. So after that's done, you guys, we are done with these pieces and look at how beautiful. You guys, it blows my mind what we can do with thrifted items and how these were black and orange and not very 2022. And now they look absolutely gorgeous and anybody would be proud to put these in their home. I love how that white wax just makes everything pop. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so you probably notice this is not a spring or Easter video. I just wanted there to be some variety in my content because I know not everybody decorates for you know, every season, not everybody celebrates, you know, Easter or decorates for it. So I just wanted to throw in some just regular DIYs um, and hopefully you guys are digging that. And then, you know, you guys can interpret these into Easter, spring, whatever you want, change up the color. Remember, these videos are all about the inspiration and using the bones of a DIY to make them your own. So you guys, I hope you enjoy it. And you all know if you're digging me, if you're digging this channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you like and make sure you subscribe because it's a free way you could help me out. And you guys check that description box down below. I have all my links for our Facebook group, TikTok, uh, Instagram. I mean, everything is down there for you guys. So you guys, I said you guys a lot. Let's go ahead and just get back into the rest of these DIYs. All right, y'all, the husband threatened me. He said he would not uh, break down any more spindle chairs until I use the ones I have. So walking around my booth uh, or the market, I was seeing people bundling up spindles that were chippy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should do that too. So we are gonna try different mediums for distressing spindles, okay? So the first one we are going to try is going to be the, uh, I wanna say Dixie Belle, I don't know. So we're gonna take our blue chalk paint, we're gonna paint our first spindle, and it's okay if you don't cover the entire piece of wood, totally fine. Make sure you clean your spindles first, okay? Clean it, then we're going to do our first coat of chalk paint. We're gonna allow that first coat to dry I don't know which one I used first. Let's see, we're gonna find out right now. Yes, so Dixie Bell Crackle. So the thing with Crackle Medium is you wanna do one brush stroke. You don't wanna do multiple brush strokes over each other because it ruins the look of the Crackle. But please tell me y'all, people that use Dixie Bell, because this is my second time now using it and I just can't figure it out. I put a light coat, I tried to stick with one brush stroke. Then I set it to the side to let it dry. That's another thing I don't like about this is it takes forever to dry. But I set it to the side. Then when I went to go pick it up to see if it was finally dry, it had like ran down and like bubbled up. So I had to like try and yeah get the cloudy bubbles off. 
Um, and then I still had to go back in and like dry it some more. It took forever. So after I finally get it dry, I take, um, I want to say this one is Mineral by Waverly. I put that over and I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I mean, there's a little bit of a barrier. There's a little bit of a crackle, but it's not giving me the crackle that I want. So again, if somebody uses Dixie Bell a lot, please let me know what, if anything, I'm doing wrong. I applied heat because usually with my other crackle mediums, if you apply heat, it intensifies the crackle. But y'all, I wasn't getting diddly squat with this as far as crackle goes. So now we're going to try a different method, okay? So we're going to take another one. I am going to just, this is crackle medium for chalk paint by Folk Art. And again, taking a chip brush, doing one stroke coats of this, it will dry down glossy. So it doesn't dry down matte. So keep that in mind. Now this crackle medium dries super fast. I use my heat gun to dry it because it intensifies the crackle. And then I'm gonna use a contrasting color on top of this wood. So whatever you are laying the crackle medium on is what is gonna show through your top coat of paint. So now I'm taking plaster by Waverly. And again, I'm gonna do one stroke and you guys, you will start seeing this crackle right away. You can see it separating from the clear coat that we put down first. And I will do a closer up of this, but this by far is my favorite crackle medium. They do make different ones. So there is a chalk paint version of folk art and there's an acrylic paint one. I do have those in my Amazon store and in my Amazon craft live. So now I'm just drying it. And look, look at that. You could see the crackle right away. So we just finished drying that again. With this crackle medium, heat is going to intensify that crackle look on there. Our next one we do is the candle method. So I'm going right on top of the wood spindle and the more wax you get on there, the more distressing you're going to get. So I put a nice, healthy coat of wax on it. This is just a candle from Dollar Tree. Taking that same blue paint and you can do multiple um, paint layers with this technique. So I do the blue. I'm going to let this dry. I do use my heat gun. Doesn't affect like the candle wax at all. After that's dry, I'm going to take that candle again and I'm going to rub it all over there. Again, a really generous coat of that wax. And like I said, if I wanted to do more, I could do this and then like a gray coat and then a white coat. You just want to make sure that you're putting that candle wax in between each coat of paint. So now I'm using my contrasting color in moss and you don't see anything yet. Okay. You don't see crackle like you do with the medium. How we're going to get that is we're going to take, this is shipping tape. You can take duct tape. And I'm just wrapping it around, rubbing it, and then look, you peel it away and it takes off those different layers. You could see the wood, you could see the blue, you could see the green. So anywhere that wax was is where it's peeling up that paint and giving you that beautiful distressed look that we're going for. And it's nice because, I mean, candles are so inexpensive. A lot of us just have them at the house. Okay, here's a little just comparison. Let me stand up. I'm like over my light. Sorry if it's not the best, but here we go. So obviously the crackle medium, you get like that super beautiful crackle. I love the candle too. I think that turned out so well. Uh, the Dixie Bell. Now, I don't know if I'm using this stuff wrong or what, but I've tried it one time before and it just doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to end up getting a rough sanding block and kind of sanding over this because uh, I don't like the way it looks at all. 
but to each their own. Um, so yeah, I would think the folk art is my favorite, then the candle, and then that's next. And here is what I'm left with. And these are gonna be so beautiful in my booth and I could price them individually. If I wanted to, I could bundle them together, tie them with twine and sell them as a bundle as well. I have tons of these. So I think I'm gonna do this with a lot, lot more. So I hope that, you know, gave you some ideas. All right, our last piece. I am using uh, this crockery. I got it from the Goodwill for $4.99. I sprayed it with clear matte spray paint outside. I just find that chalk paint, any paint, adheres better when like glass has something on it. Uh, that's just to each their own. Anywho, all right, so I put the, the painter's tape on the inside because I didn't want to paint the inside of the crockery. So I used that as like a, a, a guide, a, blocker uh you bleep 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 anyways <laughs> i'm a mess so i took my moss chalk paint mix it with a little bit of baking soda taking my chip brush i'm going to go over my crockery um one time that is why i love this mixture because it is full coverage and then of course i love um how it looks afterwards but I'm gonna finish this up, then we are going to grab, and then just, I use my uh, heat gun to dry it. It dries totally fine like that. And then I'm going to use my IOD molds and my air dry clay. So you guys have seen me do this a, a bunch of times now. I put some cornstarch in my molds. These are also, again, from IOD. And then I am going to rub our clay inside and you you guys i've learned if like the older the clay is it makes it really hard to work with it and i know a lot of you guys advise me to put like a damp paper towel in there or you could spritz it with water but i still feel like it's not the same as when you open like a fresh package but anywho i am going to take this out of the mold i just flip it on over and then it peel it out, there we go. And then I'm going to paint this in the moss green, just trying to make sure that I get in all of those fine details so that we don't have any of the white showing here. And I will, I did make a mistake, but I, I'm gonna tell you guys a little later, okay? After you guys see the mistake, then, then I'll tell you, just don't do the mistake, all right? Okay, so. After the paint dries, I am going to take my mold and I'm gonna take my Starbond thick uh, super glue adhesive. Now I've seen people use tight bond, wood glue, Gorilla Glue, I've seen all different adhesives. So you don't have to have this one to attach the mold. So after I'm done with the mold, I'm like, ooh, we need to fancify this. So I am going to grab my Arteza Mica powders. So just off Arteza's website, or I believe they sell them on Amazon too. I'll try linking them in my Amazon. Oh no, sorry. First I white wax it, of course. And just so you know, white wax is also your sealer. So after you apply the wax, you do not need to take it outside and seal it with anything. Um, I also hit the frame because I need that mica powder to be able to stick to something. So now I'm gonna take that mica powder, this is in bronze. I'm just going to put it on my finger and rub it around that frame. And oh my word, does this take it up a notch, let me tell you. And I have the big pack of mica powders, they come in so many colors. All right, so after I'm done putting a nice little coat on there, now, my mistake, y'all. So, I have to say that I should have done the mold, applied it to the white crock first, and then painted over it. Because I let this set up overnight. Well, when I came back down to finish this, um, the frame had detached from the crockery, and I have a feeling that's because of my textured 
paint because the paint came with it. So I believe what I should have done was attach the frame to the white crockery and then painted the frame and the crockery at the same time and that wouldn't have happened. So do as I say, not as I do. Anywho, now we are taking a graphic from Graphics Fairy. I did resize this in Canva, so I will link that down below for you. I am putting some Mod Podge on the crockery itself. I put a very light coat on the back of the image, and then I'm just going to smooth that down. I had a little bit extra, so I just pushed that down in the corners there. Love, love this image. And a lot of the images from Graphic Fairy are absolutely free, like majority of them are. So I will leave that link down below as well. Then I just put the Mod Podge over to seal in this paper and look at how gorga. It just blows my mind, you guys. We took a plain white crockery and turned it into this vintage, stunning piece. And I, I love it. And now it's like I could resell these pieces in my booth and they'll find a new home and make somebody so happy. So you guys, if you like this video, if you wanna see more of these, you know, booth resell pieces, please let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have an amazing, fantastic weekend. You guys, we're doing a, we're doing a costume change. It's not a big one. You guys, if you're pregnant, if you know someone that's pregnant, if you have a daughter that's pregnant, a granddaughter that's pregnant, look at these. Look at these leggings. I got them on a flash deal on Amazon. They oh look, I still have to tag. $10.99 each. Gosh, look at how big my bump's getting. I bought seven of them, hoping, hoping. It is so hard to find bottoms that fit while you're pregnant and look. I'm obsessed. Obsessed with them. They are the most comfortable pants that I have had on since being pregnant. Like they're amazing they're amazing okay <laughs> not much of a change but i mean it's enough right uh but seriously <laughs> these things are freaking amazing all right let's get into this <sighs> what do you want besides getting your drool, you just drink water.